Here we have all of our teachers' masterpieces, including this one. This is uh, Juniper. They call them Shinpaku in Japan. And this one's over 800 years old. 800 years old. And all of this white part is actually dead on the bonsai, and the only living part is this right here, which we call the live vein, which connects down into the roots and all the way up into every branch of the tree. And that's what's keeping this tree alive. Where in Puerto Rico are you from? Bayamón. You're in Bayamón? Bayamón, yeah. Wow. This is the most famous one that we have. It's been all over Japanese shows, TV, you name it. It's been all over Japan. This one. Wow. This is the that. one that we have. And it's also a juniper. But this one's over a thousand years old. It's 1,100 years old to be exact. And it's the third oldest bonsai in Japan. This is a Yamadori, a tree from the mountains of Japan. So it was collected uh, specifically from Hokkaido, the northern islands of Hokkaido, which is a really inhospitable environment. And where they grow, there's barely any soil, so they get stunted by nature. That's why they're so small. And on this one, this is the only living part of the tree. The rest is completely dead. 90% of the tree is dead, but it's still very much alive. So, how do we make the shape of the bonsai, right? We mainly use wire. We use either copper or aluminum wire. This is aluminum. And the wire is there so we can bend, manipulate the branches into any position that we want to create the silhouette of the bonsai. That's what we mainly do. And then, uh, every year when the new growth comes, like this, this is a candle. This is what we would call a candle. We would just prune it back and that will make the tree bifurcate and what that means is it will create new branches and it'll stay in the same shape that it has as well so now i'm going to show you guys the most expensive one that we have does that mean these are for sale these two are not for sale these are priceless okay but if you are interested i have this one for you okay and it's only one million us dollars oh nice but yeah why is it so expensive right Number one, it's the type of tree that it is. It's a Japanese black pine, Uromatsu, and they're very, very popular for bonsai, so they're very sought after. And number two is the age of this bonsai. It's a 600-year-old tree, and that's as old as Japanese black pines get in nature. But since it's a bonsai, we maintain the roots and the foliage of the tree, young and healthy, by constantly pruning. We have to repot the tree. Uh, for Japanese black pines, it might be once every three to four years, and that entails taking the tree out of the pot, taking out some of the old soil, putting in new soil, cutting some of the old roots, and putting the tree back in the same pot or in a similar size pot. And then lastly for the price is the pot. This is an ancient Chinese pot. It's 300 years old, and the pot itself can have a price of $200,000. So this is an azalea, they call them satsuki, and this is actually a hybrid. There's over 5,000 different types of azaleas in Japan. And if you look closely, there's actually two types of flowers in the same tree, you see? And that's because either the mother or the father had this type of flower, and the other one had this type of flower, and then the offspring has both. In a tokonoma display, not only can you display beautiful bonsai like this, but you can also display the kakijiku, which is the Japanese scroll, or uh, shitakusa, which is a grass thing. It literally translates to grass thing. It's an excellent plant too, bonsai. And then this, this is called a suiseki, which is a water stone in Japanese. And they're called that because they're found in the rivers of Japan, and they can represent anything from a mountain to an island like this one so the sand would be the water and then the stone would be the island and then the kakajiku is complementing that with a picture of the, the ocean and the sun and then on this one uh, azaleas in japan they grow around the rivers the river banks and the scroll is representing a waterfall so you can imagine the waterfall at the distance and then a river coming through here and the azalea growing around the river
multiple colored flowers in the same tree. So you have this uh, magenta color, you have like this pink with white. So do they do that by grafting? No, no. Again, these are hybrids. So they just keep hybridizing them. Through, until they with have the pollen? Them. Yeah, yeah. And then this one right here is the biggest tokonoma display. And in the biggest tokonoma display, you put the biggest bonsai. Here we have our last two displays. The one on the left is another juniper. And this one is a cascading style or a semi-cascade. Branches going down, cascading. And then this one on the right is a maple. They call them momiji. And then the bottom part is called the nebari, which are the exposed roots. And the older the tree is, the bigger the nebari is. And slowly the exposed roots merge together creating this beautiful plate at the bottom. The deciduous trees don't get to be as old as conifers, but for a deciduous tree this is very old, being 150 years old. <laughs> oh, I'm taking a photo of that! Yeah, and also Cameron Diaz is here. Oh, wow. And uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Well. <laughs> yeah, he's been here twice. Oh, oh wow. Who? Jeff. Jeff Bezos. Jeff wow, he's really into it then, huh? Yeah, uh, the first time he was here, he bought a 10,000 tree, which is pennies for him, I guess. So the master here, his name is Kunio Kobayashi, and he just signed one of his books for us. I can't wait to read that on the history of bonsai. And then he has another one on the practice, so you can learn how to do it. Um, but he's really the master. He's, I believe, in his mid-70s and considered the world's best. This is pretty interesting. So for a fertilizer, you can see they have these little balls here, and that's a combination of chicken poop and grape seeds. And uh, so it seems to be the perfect fertilizer for bonsai. They're using them in all the trees. Mutation of a Japanese black pine. And it's called cork bark black pine because all of it is bark, basically. How unusual. No. Yeah. So you, you make this hybrid here yeah. or you can find this in nature? It's a mutation. A mutation. In nature that happens. So this is interesting. They pick beautiful rocks from streams and then turn them into these sculptures. They purposefully make these roots spread out by cutting around the base and then they use a moss, sort of like a root hormone, which causes the roots to spread out like this. 